Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into the compelling narrative of The Future We Choose. The renowned authors Christiana Figueres and Tom Rivet Karnak articulate two distinct futures one, a dystopian world battling intensified global warming, resource depletion, and dismal quality of life. The other, a vision of equilibrium where global temperatures have stabilized, life thrives, and human civilization flourishes. The choice, they argue, lies in our hands, specifically in the actions we undertake over the next vital decade. As the former Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Christiana Figueres brings a wealth of experience in international diplomacy and environmental leadership to the table. Under her stewardship, the historic 2015 Paris Agreement was realized. Co-author Tom Rivet Karnak, a British political strategist and ex-Buddhist monk, served as Figueres's key advisor during these decisive negotiations. His past roles include helming the Carbon Disclosure Project USA, an influential charity advocating for climate transparency. The Future We Choose is an urgent clarion call for individuals feeling disillusioned about the prospects of climate change, those keen on contributing to a sustainable future, or simply anyone anxious about the trajectory of our planet. So, join us as we explore this thought-provoking book in our latest episode of 20 Minute Books. The Future We Choose, Surviving the Climate Crisis. Introduction. What lies ahead for you? Discover the power of shaping a green tomorrow. As we step further into the year 2020, we are nestled in the heart of a crisis. The globe is getting feverish, our time is trickling out, and the fateful point of no return is looming ever closer. While not all of us encounter the immediate effects of climate change regularly, it's evident to most that the world today sharply contrasts what it used to be just a handful of decades ago. Fewer wildlife species roam the lands, the seasons are warmer than ever, and forests across the globe are aflame. The forthcoming decade will prove pivotal if we aspire to prevent humanity from falling prey to the harshest consequences of climate chaos. The mission by 2030 is stark. Cut our emissions by at least half, And the 2050 goal? We need to hit net zero. We cannot afford to discharge more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than what the Earth can organically soak up. The options are binary. Act now or stand idle. Either way, the ramifications of our choice will echo throughout our lives and into the generations to come. We must stir into action without delay. In this narrative, you'll unearth the potential peak temperature our planet may reach by 2050, how to quit viewing life as a zero-sum contest, and the importance of peaceful demonstrations in this context. Part 1. Without immediate action, we tread towards a world unfit for habitation. Envision this scenario. It's a fresh morning, and as per your new routine, you wake up to check your phone not for answering messages, but to gauge the day's air quality index, determining if it's safe enough to venture outdoors. Despite the radiant sunshine streaming in through the window, your app signals a high ozone level and airborne pollutants. It's a mask day again. The onslaught of heat is another reality to contend with. The planet is no longer the same pleasant place it used to be in your youth, and any chance of reversing that is lost. Flash forward to 2050. In another half century, large swaths of the earth could be rendered uninhabitable. The core takeaway here is, unless we rally for action now, we're treading a precarious path towards an uninhabitable world. The devastating realities depicted in this future scenario would still hold true even if we managed to curtail greenhouse gas emissions enough to limit global warming to under 2 degrees Celsius. In simpler terms, This is the imminent reality we face, regardless of whether we meet the primary objective of the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. 
and once we hit the threshold beyond which we lose control over the warming, it's a domino effect of cascading tipping points. The Arctic ice sheets melting is among the most urgent tipping points. The ice, due to its albedo effect, deflects large portions of the sun's heat back into space, and its disappearance spells doom. The resulting rise in sea levels and unabated heat absorption paves the way for a catastrophic chain of events. The swelling seas give rise to widespread flooding. The world's coastal cities reel under infrastructural damage, and as they drown, inland regions suffer from intense aridness. Fertile terrains morph into barren deserts, with numerous regions no longer able to sustain life. Extreme weather phenomena, such as hurricanes and tropical storms, become commonplace, wreaking havoc, killing and displacing millions, and triggering a colossal refugee crisis. The remaining urban landscapes are far from ideal living spaces. Parisian summers hit a scorching 44 degrees Celsius, 111 degrees Fahrenheit, with alarming regularity. And it's far worse in central India, where temperatures soar to 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, for an astonishing 45 days each year. To put it bluntly, the misery is widespread. Fueled by a deep-seated anger towards past politicians and citizens who chose inaction in the face of the looming climate crisis. Part 2. Envisioning a Green Future. A mammoth task demanding a complete transformation of our systems. Let's imagine a different, more sustainable future. Picture waking up in the year 2050 to step outside and take a deep breath of crisp, fresh air. Your cityscape is transformed into a lush canvas. Trees envelop every block. Rooftops are adorned with gardens, and each empty plot now hosts a leafy park or a fun-filled playground for kids. The world over, forests account for half the land cover, leaving scant open plains. The burgeoning network of electric railways has bridged gaps between cities like never before. Within the United States, Cross-country flights are now a relic of the past. High-speed bullet trains whisk you from New York City to Los Angeles with ease. The central insight here is, crafting a sustainable future is well within our reach, but it necessitates radical shifts in nearly all our current practices. This greener version of 2050 is predicated on some significant changes. Foremost among these is slashing our carbon emissions by half every 10 years, starting from 2020, eventually reaching net zero by 2050. This ensures we have a fighting chance to keep global warming below the vital 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold, thereby evading the worst case scenarios of climate change. The transition has not been an effortless one, with various aspects of our lives having undergone extensive changes. On the roads, the once ubiquitous high-pollution generating vehicles have vanished, making way for electric cars. Our dependency on fossil fuels is no more. We've made a complete shift to renewable energy. Innovative technologies and production methods of clean energy have proven to be game-changers for developing countries. In the early 21st century, there were one billion people in remote locations living without electricity. Today, they are energy self-sufficient, paving the way for advancements in education, healthcare, and sanitation. Everywhere you look, cultures have undergone a shift, becoming more community-focused. Neighborhoods engage in collective food buying, subscribing to weekly deliveries from local farms. The food is then divided among them. But given the costs, most localities also tend to shared gardens, growing their own produce. Thanks to the adoption of healthier, plant-based diets, there's been a significant drop in rates of heart attacks, strokes, and other health conditions. If we take the correct actions now, this sunny and inhabitable world of 2050 can be ours, but this requires us to act boldly and promptly. As we'll see in the next segment, such transformation will not occur unless we first reorient our mindset. Part 3. Addressing climate change demands an unwavering conviction in our capacity to overcome it. Where do you land on the optimist-pessimist spectrum? Interestingly, your immediate response may not hold much significance. According to psychological theories, one can tweak their outlook towards the future by challenging present thought patterns 
and nurturing more positive ones. This implies that even if you presently identify as a pessimist, you can persuade yourself into becoming an optimist. And to confront the stark reality of the climate crisis, we all need to infuse our attitudes with a healthy dose of optimism. A common misstep many of us make is treating climate change as an inevitable calamity, a problem so gargantuan that our efforts would be fruitless. However, this pessimistic mindset, besides being founded on fallacies, is inherently irresponsible. The central takeaway is, tackling the climate crisis necessitates an unwavering belief in our capacity to solve it. The regular influx of news, data, and projections about climate change can be discouraging. During times when you find yourself feeling particularly disheartened about the world's chances, it can be therapeutic to remind yourself of the positive strides we've already taken. For instance, in the United Kingdom, clean power now accounts for over 50% of the total energy. The situation is even more promising in Costa Rica, which is now completely powered by clean energy. On an individual scale, emissions reduction might not have as significant an impact as nationwide efforts, but that shouldn't discourage you. Every bit of reduction is a step towards the broader goal. Maintaining an optimistic outlook isn't always straightforward. Even the authors have struggled to keep their spirits high during high-stress scenarios. Take, for instance, the 2010 press conference in Bonn, Germany, where author Christiana Figueres was asked if she believed a global climate agreement was feasible. Her response? Not in my lifetime. However, as soon as these words escaped her lips, Figueres realized her attitude was fundamentally flawed. Giving in to pessimism was tantamount to accepting a bleak future. She left that press conference with a renewed determination to embrace stubborn optimism and to instill such potent faith in a better future that it would be contagious. Her optimism planted the seed of change, marking her initial step towards leading a global crusade against climate change that ultimately culminated in the 2015 Paris Agreement. No matter how daunting the challenges appear, we too must adopt this spirit of relentless optimism. Part 4. By fostering an attitude of abundance and cooperation, we realize there's often sufficient for all. Visualize a regular weekday morning. You're awaiting your bus or train, anticipating the daily commute. As the vehicle approaches and you scramble to board the packed carriage, what emotions do you experience? Most likely, you feel a sense of urgency. The urgency to secure the best seat, regardless of what it takes. This competitive instinct pervades our society. We often view life as a zero-sum game, with every situation leading to winners and losers. But imagine if instead of feeling a sense of loss due to not securing a seat on the bus or train, you embrace the win of engaging in a delightful conversation with a fellow passenger. The crucial takeaway is, by fostering an attitude of abundance and cooperation, you realize there's often sufficient for all. The zero-sum game perspective isn't just uninspiring, it also fabricates a sense of scarcity where none exists. And just like those elusive bus seats, our planet's resources aren't necessarily scarce. Consider Tucson, Arizona, which experiences a mere 28 centimeters of rainfall annually. Given the limited rainfall, water is perceived as a scarce resource. Consequently, the local population has, over time, extracted as much groundwater as possible. The paradox lies in the fact that Tucson's yearly groundwater usage is less than 28 centimeters. Despite the perceived scarcity, there's more than enough water for everyone. Ironically, the populace's excessive response to the presumed shortage has worsened the situation. In contrast, certain parts of the world are grappling with genuine scarcity. Dwindling resources, fewer wildlife species, and shrinking forest cover compared to half a century ago. To navigate this reality, the authors advocate for embracing an abundance mindset and fostering a spirit of collaboration. Abundance denotes recognizing the multitude of ways in which everyone's needs can be met, ensuring mutual victory. After all, in the climate battle, any group's loss spells disaster for us all. The burning of the Amazon, for instance, affects everyone, not just those residing in Brazil. Part 5. Reviving the world's natural resources is possible. 
but it requires the adoption of a regenerative lifestyle. As a species, humanity has always been driven by an instinctual desire for more. We perpetually extract from the land, the sea, and from the indigenous communities that have been subjugated throughout history. However, our planet's resources are not infinite, and we're nearing the threshold where extraction will no longer be feasible. Now, we need to adopt a strategy of replenishment, connecting with nature to guarantee future generations the richness we've experienced. The essential insight is, reviving the world's natural resources is possible, but it requires the adoption of a regenerative lifestyle. We often exhibit a regenerative and caring attitude towards our loved ones. We safeguard their well-being, helping them recover from life's trials. Strangely, though, we often fail to extend the same care towards ourselves. Your first step towards embracing a regenerative mindset should be self-replenishment and self-nourishment. Meditating can be extremely beneficial for maintaining calm and building resilience against upsetting news and incidents. But, if meditation isn't your thing, identify activities that contribute to your well-being and incorporate them into your routine. Having internalized this practice, you can direct your focus towards nature. Natural regeneration allows species and biosystems to heal and recover from human exploitation or interference. Regenerative policies can dramatically improve our environment. Consider the gray and humpback whale populations. Commercial whaling in the 19th century severely diminished these species, but since the prohibition of whaling, their numbers have rebounded almost entirely. However, merely eliminating human interference won't be enough to reverse the damage inflicted on global ecosystems. In many instances, we'll need to actively rewild forests and oceans, reintroducing native species, and replanting trees and shrubs in deforested regions. While we may not be able to fully restore our ecosystems to their original state, our existence is intertwined with the Earth's survival. We cannot afford to take it for granted. Part 6. Our path to a sustainable world demands courage, letting go of the past, and moving boldly towards the future. Imagine the year is 2015, and the Paris Agreement negotiations are nearing their climax. The authors are in their office, finalizing the details. Suddenly there's a knock at the door, and the head of UN security enters to relay a horrifying announcement. A bomb has been discovered at Le Bourget subway station, the closest stop to the conference. Faced with this chilling news, the authors had a choice. Continue with the conference, risking another explosive incident, or cancel everything, possibly demolishing the best opportunity for an international consensus on climate change. They chose to proceed. The crux of the matter is, our path to a sustainable world demands courage, letting go of the past, and moving boldly towards the future. Your decision to combat climate change may not be as dramatic as the author's, but there's one factor that could obstruct your progress towards a greener future, nostalgia. Nostalgia's potent influence often stymies progress and change, making it tough to break away from old habits. Disturbingly, nostalgia's impact often trickles down into political spheres. In the United Kingdom, for example, Many country farmers are keen on preserving the traditional countryside aesthetic, resisting the installation of wind turbines on their lands. They typically favor conservative party politicians who, in 2015, amended planning regulations to complicate and inflate the cost of constructing wind farms, leading to an 80% drop in new turbine capacity. We all need to come to terms with an inconvenient truth concerning our climate. Despite their significant contributions to human development, Fossil fuels' continued usage is unsustainable. Challenging our nostalgia might be a daunting task. Picturing considerable alterations to our lifestyle can induce a profound sense of loss. But if we manage to accept this grief, it can guide us towards forging a superior vision for the future. By setting ambitious goals, we can make the prospect of a sustainable future tangible. No matter how far-fetched that vision appears currently, consider this. In 1961, when President John F. Kennedy declared his intention to put a man on the moon, few believed it was feasible, yet we all know the outcome.
Part 7. Technology can be a potent ally in mitigating climate change, but we must harness it judiciously. When we think of nature and technology, they don't necessarily seem like compatible allies. However, technological advancements could prove instrumental in combating climate change. Consider autonomous electric cars. They emit significantly less than conventional vehicles and could ultimately reduce private car ownership. Imagine summoning a car, Uber style, but without the driver. Or think about plant-based and lab-grown meat substitutes. Shifting production from farm to lab could drastically reduce agriculture's impact on global emissions. The opportunities are limitless, yet we should tread with caution. The focal point is, technology can be a potent ally in mitigating climate change, but we must harness it judiciously. Technologies like a double-edged sword have their disadvantages. Autonomous cars, for instance, might render it easier for governments to monitor their citizens. Additionally, in Brazil, where over 20 million people depend on agriculture for their livelihood, transitioning to lab-grown meat might result in extensive unemployment. The key here is mindfulness. Artificial intelligence is expected to become a critical component in almost every industry. In renewable energy, for example, a significant drawback is its reliance on external conditions, such as sun or wind availability. But an AI-powered energy grid could adapt to these conditions, discerning when to store energy and when to distribute it. This intelligent grid would ensure uninterrupted energy supply, irrespective of weather conditions. In certain areas, AI has already achieved considerable progress. Back in 2016, Google engineers implemented algorithms in their data centers and managed to optimize energy flow so effectively that they cut their cooling expenses by 40%. While investment in new technologies is indeed thrilling, it's equally crucial to rejuvenate our connection with nature. Our contemporary lifestyle often confines us indoors, engrossed in screens leading to obesity, decreased physical strength and depression, according to research. One simple yet effective way of connecting with nature and contributing to climate change mitigation is to step outside and plant a tree. We don't require sophisticated technology to leverage trees and plants' innate ability to absorb carbon dioxide and emit oxygen. By merely planting more trees, we can help vast regions of the earth maintain stable rainfall, enhance soil fertility, and boost farm production. Part 8. Shifting our consumption habits is the call of the hour. In today's world, rampant consumerism is the norm. Products and brands are crafted in such a way that possessing them becomes an identity, distinguishing you as part of a tribe with similar tastes. Over time, our identities have become intricately linked with the things we buy. The fashion industry is notably problematic due to its colossal carbon footprint, coming second only to the oil industry. Shockingly, textile production emits more greenhouse gases than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. If we can manage to escape this vicious cycle of consumerism, it could be a powerful strategy to combat climate change. The essential takeaway here is shifting our consumption habits is the call of the hour. The trend of mass consumption not only fuels our addiction to buy more, but it also negatively impacts our psychological health. This constant cycle of buying creates a void in our minds that we attempt to fill by spending money, basing our identities on our purchases. Ironically, our leaders measure societal progress via gross domestic product, GDP, a numerical economic gauge that overlooks our well-being and happiness. The silver lining in this cloudy situation is that we can counter these factors. No, you don't have to entirely stop spending money. But you can certainly become more discerning about where your money goes. For instance, in the realm of fashion, consider purchasing high-quality clothes made from organic cotton, as opposed to cheaply produced fast fashion items destined for the bin in a few months. Commit to boycotting companies with unsustainable production processes favoring those dedicated to sustainability. Your money speaks volumes, 
the next time you need to replace your car, think about opting for an electric vehicle. Or consider modifying your home's heating and cooling methods. Conduct an energy audit for your home and plan your transition to electric heating to coincide with the replacement of your old boiler. With these changes, capital will begin to diverge from the unsustainable consumer model of the past towards the sustainable, green economy we need for the future. By challenging the notion that more possessions equate to a better life, you're likely to feel significantly happier too. Part 9. Discovering the truth is essential for advocating political action against climate change. It's no mystery that the internet is a labyrinth of misinformation, with social media platforms doing little to counter the issue. A striking revelation from an MIT analysis of Twitter is that fabrications propagate six times faster than the truth on average. Some have gone so far as to label our present world as a post-truth era. Even when political leaders brazenly propagate untruths and dismiss scientific facts, we still trust them. This can be attributed to our inherent confirmation bias, our innate desire to be proven right about our beliefs. The core takeaway here is, discovering the truth is essential for advocating political action against climate change. While it can be gratifying to come across evidence that aligns with your perspective, striving to separate fact from fiction can empower you to partake in political action that fosters a brighter future. Politicians have their reasons for twisting the truth about climate change. Corporate interests have funneled vast amounts of money into politics over the years, acquiring influence over our elected representatives. It's shocking to note that governments worldwide continue to provide subsidies amounting to $600 billion annually to the fossil fuel industry. How can ordinary citizens stand against such potent political forces? Nonviolent political protest has proven to be a significant catalyst for change throughout history. Consistent change has been observed when about 3.5% of a population unites in nonviolent protest for a common cause. In the United States, that translates to 11 million people marching, protesting, and demanding policy changes regarding climate change. Advocating for more women leaders is another robust strategy to combat the climate crisis. While gender equality has made significant strides in many areas of life, the majority of leaders are still male. Data suggests that institutions with a higher proportion of female leaders are more likely to take action against climate change. Furthermore, women legislators tend to vote for climate action nearly twice as often as men, a compelling reason to consider voting for a woman the next time you're at the ballot box. Importantly, don't despair if the magnitude of the challenges we face seems overwhelming. Yes, the journey ahead may be tough, but it's not too late to choose a better future. Final summary. The essential takeaway here is, we stand at a crucial juncture in human history where we can make a conscious choice to combat climate change assertively, enabling a sustainable future, or choose inertia that would drastically deteriorate the lives of upcoming generations. Although the situation is grave, there's still a glimmer of hope. But for our planet to avert the catastrophic reality of irreversible warming by 2050, monumental changes are needed. Be it engaging in political advocacy, shifting away from consumerism, or planting trees, any endeavor to minimize your carbon footprint, no matter how insignificant it might seem, plays a vital role in this battle for survival. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.